Every time I rise to speak on a matter of public importance, I reflect on the words of what we're here to do, I reflect on a matter of public importance. Now, the government have set today's matter of public importance as a opportunity for them to slap themselves on the back and congratulate themselves on the big build. Now, before I go into the big bill aspect of their big build, um, and, and before I talk about what we should be saying in a matter of public importance, um, I just have to note the bloated self-importance that this government are spending their time on today. When we have, as has already been mentioned, just come out of our third lockdown, where we've got families struggling, a 20% increase on Saturday last week to calls to Lifeline, when we've got sickening reports by the Commissioner about children's in state care being groomed for sex by pedophiles. That sickening information that's come out today. And what about organised crime and money laundering going on under our nose at Crown Casino? I'm here talking on the government's matter of public importance on a big build which I've heard nothing but self-gratification of the government about what they are doing and how good they are. Is that just a disgrace because the people of Victoria want us here to deal with matters of public importance. That's what they want. So I'm going to refer now to some of the blowouts for a start so people can actually see what the big build is getting for your taxpayer dollar in Victoria. And we look at, for a start, the North East Link, which was a promised $5 billion project. Now, 15, over $15 billion, a blowout of 315%, or $10.7 billion. The Westgate Tunnel, which was supposed to be finished by 2022, and I obviously drive across the Westgate fairly frequently to get back to my electorate, and I did note before it was reported in the paper that the signs were suddenly disappearing off the wall that uh, finished by 2022, because it actually won't be finished by 2022, or maybe not even by 2023, because the builders don't know when it will be finished by. But that half a billion dollar project, 500 million shovel ready project at the time, is being blown out by $5.8 billion. That's a 1,268% increase. Can you imagine what that waste could have achieved in regional Victoria for our country roads that are in a dilapidated state? But before I talk about country roads, I want to start on another big stuffed up project by this government. So this is the Murray Basin Rail project, an absolute shambles, managed by Labor from go to woe and absolutely stuffed. It's half finished and it ran out of money and what has been done is so poor it has to be ripped up and done again. That's what happens when you cut corners and try to save a bit of cash by using 100-year-old rails. That's not what we're seeing in the big build in the metro areas, is it? This week, Labor tried to spin the project into a triumph, put out a media release saying how wonderful it was they were starting to work on fixing their stuff-ups. The kicker, the state is making out it's footing the bill, but like most of its projects, it's sending the bill to Canberra. And it's the federal Liberal government that's now paying to fix the Labor government's mistakes. More news this week that the Sea Lake, Menangatang area is going to have not dual gauge as it should and will not be able to be used in the streamlined approach that was identified as needed to get product to the ports. The revised business case also means that this project won't be completed to the original scope, completed to the original scope, and means that the Port of Portland in my electorate will be isolated from the grain-growing regions of the state's north. 
That's despite the Premier standing on the dock of the Port of Portland in 2015 saying how wonderful the Murray Basin project will be to help increase grain exports from the port, removing the barrier of needing two different rails trains to get the uh, product to dock. Labor's revised plans will take away the advantages of cost savings that the Port of Portland can deliver for farmers. It's a deep water port, which means a ship can be fully laden with one hit and be sent off to the world. But because the rail link is now a different gauge to the rest of the freight network, farmers will need two trains at increased cost, reducing the advantages of exporting from Portland. The Minister for Ports and Freight at the table said in that release, we have commitment to get more freight onto trains and again talks up the work the government is doing. More spin. The Victorian Farmers Federation, Ashley Fraser, a fellow scholar and uh, president of the Grains Commodity, said that 10,000 extra B double trucks will be needed this year to help cart the record grain harvest to port because the freight network is in such bad shape and isn't cost effective for exporters. That means more trucks thundering through the roads around your electorate, Minister, because of the inaction on that rail project for freight. In then in Payek, Minister, you blamed COVID for the delays in getting work done on the long-awaited Port Rail Shuttle after you announced funding for a project that was first announced in 2018 that hadn't gone anywhere. Trying to blame people working from home, staff working from home during 2020 for the delays in the project, which has actually been on the books since 2014 in the state budget. So when that was pointed out, you tried then to correct Hansart to say it had only been in the budget paper since 2018. Sorry, Minister, but you clearly have no idea what's going on in your portfolio. Two points, two, sorry, point two in the MPI talks about creating jobs in the supply chain. Well, just yesterday, I had contact from the operator of the freight services on the Warrnambool line, who at the very last minute has just heard yesterday that his train scheduled uh, cha has changed so that he can't send a train out of his yard on Friday night and in turn won't be able to have a service from Melbourne, from Warrnambool uh, to Melbourne on Monday. He was given just 48 hours notice. I don't know, Minister, if you can understand the difficulties decisions like that, snap decisions will have on business and particularly his. How is he expected to at short notice find enough trucks to replace a train and move perishable goods like meat and dairy products and still be able to make their load times on the dock to the Port of Melbourne, let alone fit in with the passenger chains that he's got that challenge of logistically. Labor says it's creating jobs for the supply chain, but at what cost to the jobs that already exist, such as my constituent who is unable to serve his customers? If he isn't able to operate in an efficient way, the jobs he provides for many people in my electorate and in the supply chain will also be lost. I haven't even started on roads, but we all know how poor the roads in South West Victoria are. And we have the federal government again having to come to the party, offering money for the project, the Princess Highway West project, so desperately needed so that the West can compete and have the opportunities that the North and the East have. The potholes in our roads, it's actually impossible to decide which are the worst roads. A member for uh, Lowen today in her um, uh, newspaper talking about how bad our roads are. One project out of the state budget for her electorate in Lowen. No projects that, uh, there's not enough projects to be able to fix our roads. I, I worry for the people of South West Victoria. I worry for the regional communities of Victoria because we have over 50% more deaths on country roads in regional Victoria and yet only 24% of the population live outside of the metro area. There's something statistically very wrong and it is our roads are really broken. And so all that waste on the big build should be being directed instead of being wasted into country roads because country people have the right to safety and when people tell me they're fearful on our roads it is of great concern and I haven't even touched on the Warrnambool line when the point six in this MPI talks about improved services to regional Victoria well it's the federal government who have given the money and the state government continue to say they will uh, get on with that project but it is years now that the people of uh, South West Victoria, Warrnambool, Portland who want to use that train have been promised velocity um, trains and it's nowhere near becoming to fruition. I leave on the point that regional Victorians have the right for this state 
to um, invest in them as well. Whether it's our roads that are appalling and no one can argue that's not true. No one. So get on with governing for all. Order. Uh, member